I am Ramesh Ranganathan and I'm delighted to be joining Paul McCartney, Mary McCartney, Stella McCartney. I didn't need to say their surnames three times. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a mistake, but I'm just going to roll with it. I don't want you to worry. I'm going to be talking very minimally. Uh, but the reason we're sitting here chatting is because we're talking about Linda McCartney's family kitchen. We're kind of using that as a, a springboard for just kind of a general a general family chat, right? Is that yeah. right, guys? Yeah. We're all just relaxed. This is the kind of thing that we do all the time. Yeah. yeah. We get together and just have a little chin wag. Yeah. We thought we might our, as well capture yeah. it. This is our living room. Yeah, it's we very nice. Together, here. We just need you. to put the curtains up, that's all. Yeah. I don't have curtains at my house at the moment. <laughs> just to give the street a show. Well, I've got some you could have. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, great. It's a great start. How are you guys? Good, thank you. Yeah. Well, in fact. What's the reason that this book has come out now? What was the kind of the... the the starting point for deciding to bring this out when you have We wanted to um, redo Linda's recipes because they were done quite a while ago and they got loads of butter and cream and mm. all stuff that makes things taste great. Mm. But we thought, you know, these days tastes have changed. Yes. So uh, we've, we've kind of made it vegan and uh, it, it tastes just as good, but it hasn't got all the... Uh, yeah. the, the, the naughty stuff in it. The naughty stuff. Mm. Yeah. Mm. How many years ago was it done, though, the Thirsty, cookbook? Because I, I think it's a bit of an anniversary, it's and an also anniversary. she did a f quite a few books, so I think it was about bringing them all together because they all had different kind of themes, different moments in time, so sort of modernising it, bringing it into the now, which Mum would very much have done had she have still been here, yeah. um, but also celebrating um, like a massive pioneering moment. You know, she was the first woman, celeb, you know, the per first person to ever do a vegetarian cookbook. And she happened to be yeah. Paul McCartney's wife. Yeah. And she, this, this, because I, I worked with her on the cookbooks as well, and she would often say, look, if I redid the books, you know, you always change the ingredients you use. Like, as Dad says, she'd use more extra virgin olive oil for mm. things. Or when you do a book, by the time you finished it, you're, like, already using different ingredients. So it was an opportunity to sort of update them and refresh it and you know it, it was time to bring out another Linda McCartney cookbook. Yeah absolutely. When like now it's very cool to be uh, vegan vegetarian or whatever um, but back in the day th there's a lot of resistance <laughs> to that kind of thing mm. wasn't there? I mean even like you know I went vegan maybe eight years ago and even when I even then I would say times have changed mm, from then since. to now. Yeah. So yeah. what was it like then trying to put across a way of thinking that just wasn't as generally accepted as it is now? I mean, the thing is, uh, we didn't try and put it across. Because, uh, as you say, I mean, it's very easy to make fun of yeah. vegetarians, because, I mean, I, I was a meat eater for the first, I don't know, 25 years of my life, or maybe 30 years of life. So I know what it would have been like if we'd seen a vegetarian. Ha <laughs> ha, you're missing your sausages, mate. Or whatever, you know, it's like mm. this, you get stupid yeah. when you meet vegetarians. So um, <laughs> so we, we didn't really bother. We, we didn't try and explain it too much. Um, but Linda was very good uh, evangelical uh, with the reasons, mm. you know. Yeah. So, um, but we didn't feel too much pressure. I think the, the kids felt pressure at school. Yeah. I think also we already had a little bit of a kind of talking point walking into the classroom anyway you know it was right. like, uh, yeah. we're at local comps we you know we've we, we had sort of these global superstars as our parents so that was already kind of horrific enough <laughs> <laughs> to have to walk into a room with and then on top of that to be a vegetarian it was kind of like wow you're like double freakish <laughs> so it was a lot of <laughs> chips and beans growing right. up in the school canteen and also things like um and the potato does become your best friend yeah but the, with the cookbook it's things like we wouldn't do. Now I think we've got to a point again where we can eat stuffed peppers or ragu or stuff. Well, at the time after growing up when we did it was like the amount of bad ragu or mm. bad like the amount of stuffed peppers. But it's peppers, still so. punishment actually and the thing about mum was she because she was American as well she was a real home cook like mm. she would open the fridge and it's very much how we all cook yeah you she wouldn't ever use a recipe and she hated them to be long and difficult and she hated measuring out things so she would always be reactive she'd go into the fridge see what she had and then cook with it yeah so and very really much seasoning and yeah. things like that making everything taste and really also though the things that she made were kind of you know we grew up with quiches we grew up with sort of mexican food you know those kind of things didn't exist in this country when mm. we were young 
how old are we yeah. exactly? But also, yeah, that's but, the thing. And it, and also, what was so from an sure, maybe we say that, but now I think in answer to your question, though, one thing that I think I think Stella agrees is we grew up in a vegetarian family. Mum and Dad sat us down and said, look, we want to become vegetarian. Mum was like, I'm not going to cook meat and fish at home, but if you want to eat it when you're out, then that's your choice. So we never felt like we had to do it, although we had, and then. Dad was like, well, what's the gap in the plate? So we always had this discussion growing up about what, how do you fill the gap in the plate so we don't feel like we're just eating side dishes all the time. Or like, I'm, if I go to something, a dinner with other people that aren't veggie, I want mine to be like them to go, what are you eating? I wish I'd ordered that, even yeah. though they're not. Mm. So we grew up very much with that. Like, and so um, we grew up with mum cooking, as Stel said, like really sort of making things up. And we'd see her seasoning things. She'd cook you'd things get, similarly to her meat cooking. So You'd get met, though, in answer to your question, you'd get met with, I would get met with a lot of aggression, defensiveness. People were quite angry if you were vegetarian. You know, if you sat at dinner and you got your, you know, your kind of punishment of grilled veg, mm -hmm. they'd be like, what's that? Why are you doing that? Yeah. Do you oh, I'm so sorry, I'm vegetarian. And it would very much be met with either ridicule yeah. or anger. No, it's and I think that's changed dramatically. It's, really changed. it's changed dramatically, but it's still, I mean, I go to America a lot, because um, yeah. Nancy's America. Um, but the, there is this thing of like, uh, you know, we're, we're solid meat eaters, and there's something virtuous about mm. that. And I know it, I grew up like that. And it's like, you know, the vegetarians are cranks. Um, but I say to people, it's actually braver to be a vegetarian. Because it may be really easy to just go with the flow mm. and go, you know, yeah, go on, you know, I'm like you. Yeah, yeah. I'm much cooler than those vegetarians. So it is kind of, you know, a little bit, uh, you, you yeah. find yourself in a position. But as you say, it's getting easier by the well, minute. Well, the great thing now is it's... Um, it's it's the future you know people are associating eating meat obviously with the environment mm. and animal agriculture and inefficient use of energy and land and grain and rainforest yeah. you know we know a hundred football pitches are cut down every hour just for cattle you know agriculture mm -hmm. so this point it's not really about it's about our kids one of know? the difficult things and I think this is still exists now but I imagine it would have been even bigger when when Linda first started becoming yeah. as passionate as she did about it is that um, you are watching the majority of people do something that you feel is kind of abhorrent. You know, if, if you, you sort of feel like somebody killing an animal every time they eat something feels so out of whack with, yeah. with what is acceptable. Yeah. But at the same time, you have to live in that. You know, you, you continue yeah. to live in that society, and you don't want to. You don't want to outcast yourself. Right. How did How did you guys find sort of negotiating the challenges of that? Because you, you obviously well, felt strongly about it. That's how she did the cookbooks. Yeah, I think. <laughs> You know, you start off being a vegetarian and it's, it's in your own home, so it's not a problem. And then you go out to dinner or you go to friend's house. And I used to have to say, oh, some of my best friends are meat eaters. Yeah. And just kind of get around it like that, you know, like. But it is strange because recently I, I was at a, a barbecue and, you know, there's like these guys over in the corner and they've barbecued, like seriously. Yeah. You know, it's like all night <laughs> to get this yeah, meal. Yeah, marinating the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the relation, smoked yeah. it. It's all been happening, and they've gone over in the corner because you wouldn't want to see this. They've said. <laughs> I go. I don't mind. I I go over. Yeah. And say, oh, what's that? That looks interesting. <laughs> but you, you're right, I'm going, no! It's <laughs> a bloody no. cow! Mum always did it with real grace. She yeah. was right. always, she never rammed it down people's throat. She was always like, look, information is king in this mm. room. You know, if you once you have information, it, it was, she always had a delicate way of delivering it. And yeah. people really responded to yeah. her always. They never really got, an, you know, their backs yeah. up. And but also, that's why um, she did the cookbooks. Yeah. Because people would come for dinner and then the food would be so great. They'd be like, if I could eat like this all the time, I'd eat yeah. loads well, more veggies. Definitely and why so she that did the happened so well. much that in the end she did the cookbooks and they go, oh, if I could eat like this, and they go, she'd go, here you go, here's the cookbook. So yeah. that's how the cook... She was never like, I want to be like a, but also, a you know, cookbook I... writer. And then from that, somebody contacted her because the cookbook was hugely well received. I didn't even realise it. It was you number don't one on the New York Times. Like it was hugely yeah. well yeah, it was And really Nigel well Slater did a, a meal for us once um, 
from it and he was like it was just such a revolutionary book so yeah that was lovely but she then that's how the food range came about because uh, somebody came to her and said can we develop some of the recipes for the yeah. book right and yeah. that's how that but you so know it just happened by wanting to give people ideas but i think one solutions. thing that's really important about this conversation is something's better than nothing yeah and i think our family has always just encouraged people to one day a week meat free monday it's just like one day a week it's you know if you give up meat for just that one day it's the equivalent of giving up all of your transport for an entire week so i think that idea of like it's not us against them mm. and we're not trying to ram our belief system down somebody else's throat we're just trying to kind of navigate a possibility of another way one or two days a week i mean great if you can do it forever yeah for more, more, mostly for the animals you know mum did this for the animals um but i think that's a that's sort of how we've probably gotten around it or how we kind of digest this sort of this overriding knowledge that so many people are, are, are not living this way. Well, the great thing is that we've, we've been like that for years, a little bit apologetic, mm. but now the world is like, Coming. it's amazing. It's, kind yeah. of, it's more than catching up. It's getting ahead. I mean, there's a restaurant I go to where it's vegan and it's modern, it's young, all the people serving the food are like very cool. Yeah. And they're loving what they're doing. And I sit there with people and I said, you, you can't imagine what this makes me feel. Yeah. You know, from, from going to places uh, like Claridge's in the old days. You say, I, I'm vegetarian, could you suggest something? And you, go, boom, you get like some, you know, broccoli, <laughs> cabbage and a carrot. Yeah. Steamed. And that's it, you know, yeah. even in the, the great restaurants. It still happens but, in uh, France. It's, uh, <laughs> a vegetarian, yeah. well, would you like chicken? But it is interesting, you know. <laughs> it's the, the weekend, it's, uh, it's fine. <laughs> the, way it's, the way people are catching up. Yeah. Because the, the, the element of uh, environment, when that mm. came in, I think it was like 2006 or something, there was a big uh, report the United Nations did called Livestock's Long Shadow. Mm. And it, it told the, about the methane emissions and all that, and how it was, uh, was actually damaging to the environment as things like transport, which we thought were the villain. Then suddenly it's like, whoa. Yeah. So it's lovely to have that and health and good taste all coming together. You feel together. like you've got an arsenal of arguments that you can sort of put forward. Or yeah, yeah. Also, yeah, I think it does help. Yeah, I think also, it's I actually mm. want to ask, throw this out to everyone, it's like, because I feel a bit like the industry, I think the big thing for us is the food industry, like mm. the big industry of like meat and fish, like being just trawled. And so it's like, I, I don't feel that that was invented to you know be such a big problem but now it's such a big problem we need to talk to everyone you can't just be like i'm don't eat meat so we're not we need a conversation mm. between everyone because it's a bit of a broken mm. system so do you feel that that is happening more like do you feel that people everyone from all different walks is trying to come up with a way forward do i mm. yeah. well, everybody yeah no i i think um the the reality the truth of the future is going to be, you know, overpopulation it means you've got to find more efficient ways to feed people. Mm -hmm. uh, the methane, all of these things uh, tend towards the plant-based thing. Mm. Um, it now is tasting better and better, and a lot of young people are just just prefer it. Yeah. I mean, you know, when I was a kid, you would have these horror shows that I think a lot of young people are experiencing now. Um, well, like my mum would cook uh, tongue. Right. <laughs> It'd be this bloody big tongue oh. on a plate. I go, what's oh. that? You know, it's, it's tongue. Uh, yeah. you know. What is that? <laughs> I mean, it, it was like a joke. It was like, yeah. a, and tongues, cow's tongues are very yeah, big. That's anyway, huge. so those kind of horror things, you know, I think kids nowadays are going. I don't want to eat that. Mm. I don't think they want to eat that. At least there's a good alternative. I think yeah. one of the, there's two points on, on sort of, for me on this, that it's such a, sh a shift in um, consumer choice that the business people of the world know this is the future. So you're already kind of in mm. a great place because they know that they have to have alternatives. They know that when they look at the stock exchange, the plant-based food is growing more than the, the traditional meat, you know. So that's great. I think one of the things also that
the last conversation in the room, which was mum's starting point, is, was cruelty to animals. Mm. That will be the mm. last conversation to be had. I think we can kind of latch on yeah. to the environment. We can yeah. latch on. One of the things that's really, I think, going to be a huge help to this conversation is human rights. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think anybody wants to work minimum wage or sl slightly touching on slavery in an abattoir. Like those are dark industries mm. that we don't have access to. No film camera is going to be allowed in there. Yeah. And that's up for question, I think. Mm -hmm. So I think there's human rights, there's, you know, but I think mum did it for probably the last reason that will come into a conversation, which is yeah. just equality with animals' yeah. lives on mm -hmm. Earth. But also I think a big thing, like this, this a conversation can get quite deep and yeah, quite, sure. actually quite depressing, but I've, uh, in a way, I think our point of view... That's you, where you no, come no, in. Yeah. No, but Make also, I think... Come on. No, but I think part of it is to not feel depressed about it, to think, okay, if I want to reduce my carbon footprint, if I don't want animals to be killed for my plate, I can do a different way of eating, and then and you don't you're have left to with sacrifice the, how yeah. it tastes. And so that's, and that's what, I, what the cookbook exactly. Like. That's exactly what I was going to say. So you go look. If you're somebody that's grown up in a family with meat and two veg, and you go, I don't want to eat this anymore. I think it can be a bit daunting. So I think as a family, because we've grown up eating this way, we've got loads of suggestions, and that's why the food brand happens. That's why the cookbooks happen. Mm. That's why I'm doing the cooking show. Yeah. All those things that are not because we're like trying to be you know mum didn't do it to make become a food pioneer mm. like you know make loads of money in it but it just there was such a market for it i mean yeah. you were saying you basically grew up on her well i i um so i was i've been veggie for ages and then i went vegan like maybe eight years ago and basically i, I i'm vegan but, but I, I basically became vegan at a time when i couldn't really i can't cook i couldn't cook and i just bas barely functioning as a, as a person why did you make that choice <laughs> Because I went veggie because I read this book about animals and I didn't want any. I didn't mm. want to eat animals anymore. I just decided. Mm. I came home from school and I said to my mum, "I don't <laughs> want to eat animals anymore." What did uh, she say? Well, my mum manages to sort of make it up. She she, she was <laughs> oh my darling, you're such a spiritual son. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's the Hindu way. You yeah. know, she started getting very like excited. Yeah, yeah, she loved it. <laughs> um, but then the veganism, to be honest with you, she found it a little yeah. bit trickier to get on board yeah, with because like, that's a step too far. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> but then you know, I'd sort of that's a lot of the reasons I'd gone veggie. With I realised were the same reasons that I should actually yeah. go go vegan. But yeah. um, but the thing that I I thought was interesting about the, the book was that because I I sort of see veggie like veggie recipes and vegan recipes. It's like there's two types. There's there's like fitting in ones which are kind of uh, like what. Lasagna, yeah, and 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 French, t you know, all of those mm. kind of things that you can eat alongside people that aren't veggie or, mm. or vegan. And then there's other ones that are just full out, you know, I'm vegan, I don't no. care, you know. So mm. there's, you, you seem to have like, like, did you? How? I mean, is that was that deliberate in the way that you curated the recipes? Because it feels like there's a, a mix of those. Kind it's of to things. do a range, right. a real range of things. So some of them, I think, maybe what you're pointing to, the more hearty, traditional, like the shepherd's pie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And like the French, like the pancakes are incredible. The breakfast camp pancakes. Are, but the thing is, it's interesting that you say is like you can eat them alongside, but actually these are designed so you could just make the whole thing mm. like that, and it would everyone hopefully would like it, whether you're vegan or not. Yeah. Is it I think that's the thing. When I, a lot of time when, I, when we were allowed to have people around for dinner, I would cook for friends that aren't necessarily vegetarian, and I'd do like a pie and make it gravy and try and make it so they'd go, oh, I'm, I want to eat more like this. So yeah. It feels like it's not a chore. Yeah. We don't want it, none of us want it yeah, to be a chore. You, it's good to do a little bit of a transition, not just a hardcore, here's a bean. <laughs> you know, this is good. Yeah. Hello, you know, if you, I, think they're, they're I mean, that's why we did the burgers. Yeah. Because, you know, when we were first married, um, I always wanted to do what I saw as traditional male role. Yeah. Two things in the, the kitchen were one was like um, cutting the Christmas roast in our case. Mm. So it's like dad tends to be the guy who, you know, I don't want to get all sexist no. and everything, but. <laughs> You like so what you're allowed you like to do. You like yeah, yeah. to carve the roast. And we like you carve it. <laughs> and it's true, actually. If anyone else starts carving yeah. it, yeah. I get a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it feels like a threat yeah. on your household. Yeah, I understand Excuse that. me. And the other thing is barbecuing. Right. So, you know, I like that idea. You've got a drink, it's outdoors, summer, and you've got stuff on the barbie. And uh, 
So that was why we, we did the burger but originally. I, I, I love all of that. I mean, I was yeah. saying to you before we got into it, I think yeah. I hold the record. I, re I genuinely believe there isn't anyone on this planet that's eaten more of the sausage rolls. Than yeah. Me. I, I genuinely believe that. Do and I'd love to come at me. Yeah. 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 Get my my son is in you, the room. He's, he's probably you, could, could take you down yeah, on that Yeah, we'll one. see about that, Max. Yeah. Do, you get, do you find that people have a go at you going, why, if you're vegan, why do you want to eat a sausage roll? Yeah, I and mean, you're I like, who? Why do the you? Why does? You, why do you own the sausage roll? But also, sausages are eyeballs, testicles, hooves. Like they're hardly sausages. Yeah, but they're like <laughs> crazy shit in the first place. Like, what is that? And no. you put it in that. So yeah. why not take something else? But and do it? I did a shoot, re a photo shoot recently, and they'd like done this. This woman had done this lovely catering, and she, she looked a bit annoyed. I thought she was maybe a veggie caterer, but she was a bit like, oh, I've been doing all this stuff, like coming up with these re recipes for you because I could. I had all these restrictions. Whereas I quite like it if somebody's like, oh, I don't eat gluten, I don't. I like the challenge of going, what can I make that they're going to love? Not, I don't get pissed off. She was like, but why do like vegetarians and vegans want a, like a burger or a sausage? And I have had yeah, that growing up. That, I yeah. went on the back foot, like we've had it forever. And then but I don't just know said, why. when was an no. animal grown to no, look no, like no. A, a burger? Like, no. what is the but, process? But what difference is there? Yeah, no, I mean, but then pigs what, don't look like bacon, do they? No, but then I suddenly had this flash of like, hang on, like I went like that. <laughs> And then I was like, hang on. I was really quick. I went like that. I was like, hang on. You don't own do the sausage. <laughs> a, a, meat, a sausage can be made up of any kind of protein. I yeah. was like, you can even make a sausage shape out of and if you, if you get I'm like, deep. you don't own the sausage. And, and I was like, you don't own a patty, it's a shape. Yeah. So and now if you I'm get like, deep into <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, do you know own what I mean? Shape. Yeah. But every, but they yeah, think what did she say to that? They, they do own the shape. It's a patty. It's but a if you get is. deep into what's actually in some sausages, yeah. I mean, you read some of the hardcore vegetarian stuff, it's like sawdust. <laughs> yeah, concrete glue. I mean, you know, no, no, no. <laughs> very strange stuff they managed yeah. to. How did you find it on when you were touring mm. and trying to eat vegetarian? How did you find that? Well, we started off trying to eat vegetarian. Um, on the little tours we did, but once we got onto big tours, um, yeah, because it was a lot of beans on toast, you know, th for that. So. Did you go? You all went on tour together, <coughs> right? That, that, yeah. Like you all went. It's yeah. 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 That's Doesn't why we're so normal. No, I don't Doesn't know. Everyone take kids, uh, therapy take my kids on tour. <laughs> in the back of the van, <laughs> get a little van, get some dogs, get yeah. some kids, <laughs> okay. and go and get lost somewhere. Right. That's why I've got a slight twist. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> it just comes out every now and then. But hey. then when we got on. Um, tour tour it got a bit more serious um the the promoter came to us and said well what do you want to do you know about we can have somebody who makes meat dishes for the meat people on the tour and vegetables and we said no I, we're not going to pay for that much meat because it's like we're taking about 140 people out mm. so we said we're going to have a vegetarian caterers so we found these people who come round with us and i took them aside i said this has got to be like the best cooking because a lot of the crew are going to hate it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we did have a couple of guys, you know, there was uh, Curtis, who was a big American football player. And he comes up and he says, uh, well, I don't know about this, you know, he said, can we have some meat and stuff? I said, yeah, Curtis. <laughs> I said, look, you've got your per diem. You've got your daily allowance of money. You go spend that. And, but we're not going to give you meat. We're going to give you some good stuff. So anyway, that's how we did it. And in the end, he was eating our stuff very happily and saving his, his yeah, money. The food was incredible, but though, because mum went, yeah. mum went through it with uh, It really, with it still is very good. And so good. you'd go mm. in and it's like, you know, you'd be in heaven. It's like all this, like, yeah. this array of amazing food. Like, like, we put on, 18, like, a lot. And I was like, it's <laughs> often the best restaurant <laughs> in town. Because there's so, so much on, effort right? made. Well, I think it was too good. Well, what it is, is the food's going to be really healthy and everybody's got to feel really good about it and themselves. So, it is beautiful stuff. It is. You know, it really is. Tomatoes that are really nice ones, you know? And so everybody seems happy. In fact, a lot of the guys who were on the tour last time said the food's even better this time. And they're totally going veggie for this tour. In other words, they're not going to go out and spend their money on meat. They're going to really give it a try. Linda sort of taught herself to cook, right? So mm. was it a situation where when you were growing up, you were just getting lots of experimental dishes thrown at you and, and, <laughs> and having a go? And were they all successful? That was more if Dad was cooking. I right, remember okay. an experimental yeah. thing. You I'm made something. I'm more the experimental was... type. 
Um, no, because she she grew up watching people cooking at home. She was interested. She would say she'd be in the kitchen a lot. Yeah. So mm. she um, she knew how to flavour things. And it, actually, when I left home, there were a couple of things like I made a stew and it just didn't taste as good as hers. So I had phoned up and was like, "Why is your stew?" So she just could give you tips. She mm. was like, "Put like a little bit of celery in and a little bit of cabbage," and that just added. Did she ever Flavor. do? Did she ever do what my mum does, which is deliberately leave out an ingredient so yours doesn't taste as good, and then you phone oh. her up and you go, "Mum, mine's not the same." She goes, "I don't know, maybe it's my magic touch." I don't <laughs> no. know. Like, that's what she likes really? to do. Yeah, yeah, she loves that. Have you learnt some of your mum's recipes? Did you get her to write them down? She won't write them down. Well, she has yeah. to. She well, she's refusing to. I need her number. Yeah, all the kids. I'm yeah. going to have a go at her. That's a good idea. Thank yeah, you. Please do. Yeah. She, she needs said to. She, she could put it in a, like a little book under lock and key and then eventually hand it down. Yeah, bypass to you. <laughs> Clearly, she doesn't want you to happen. Yeah, right? I guess I, guess I am the problem. Yeah. She, she just want you to happen. But, but use the kids because she'll give them to the kids. Sort of emotional blackmail. Yeah. Well, or okay. just be like, yeah, you, you can cook for me and the kids, but then eventually they need the, the recipes need to carry on in the family. So did she. That's a great thing about having these is that yeah. we've got loads of mum's recipes it sort of keeps it all and was she mm. keen to teach you like how yeah. to do it all yeah what would happen would be we would spend a lot of time in the kitchen it was a kind of focal point of the mm. house um so then it would start cooking something and then mm. she'd say to the kids oh you know will you uh, do this or will you yeah. chop this onion or something and they'd give them something to do mm. so we'd all be sitting around and they'd be watching what she was doing with the rest of the meal and at the same time contributing to it so it, it made it fun for them and yeah and then uh, eventually we would sort of cook stuff for you then guys they, when they we knew how it. to do it so so it, it, I love it's that now picture. happened a whole generation later now that <laughs> they come around to the house or i go around to their house and they do the same thing mm. they just chuck it in come here and think, wow this is amazing um, good. So they've learned off Linda to do that. Yeah. Um, the more experimental side is me. Yeah, because you like you like do all sorts of bagel mechanics. And oh stuff my like goodness! That. I, I do a very good sandwich. He does a great yeah. sandwich. I've heard Phil so Smith well, about that. I'm Becoming a little offended. Legendary. I'm a bit offended that you just we call are, it a sandwich. We are. That's not right. We're well, basically be, a sandwich. Not Sarnie. Where are your it? Scouser roots? Because it's because wow. we are we're half American, half English, right? right. So I say when half you, when American, we go half to, Liverpudlian. Well, when we go to <laughs> when we go to America, growing up, it was a sangi. Mm. Like, do you want a sangi? And when we come home, we go, do you want a sarni? So you can't call it a sandwich. You have to say sarni. Oh, it's a sarni. I mean, oh, okay. I, yeah, well, I, you know, I, I was just uh, <laughs> yeah, I, know, did I, I was make going that global there for a second. <laughs> no, it was really very transatlantic of you. Yeah. yeah. So, so, what, so can you talk we me through this? We are sandwich obsessed. So it depends, like, what we're doing. Um, right. <laughs> So, I mean, for instance, if we're living in the country and we're coming up to London mm. or, or vice versa, then I want to make a sandwich, mm -hmm. whether anyone wants it or not. Right. So, because it's like a big routine for me. You would want that sandwich. So, yeah, so I'll take a bagel, yeah. I'll cut it in three. In three? Yeah. Because well, in half two, is too stodgy. Because it's, like too, a... it's too big. So you're taking, it, you're taking the middle section out of it? No, using oh. it. You're using it? Yeah. Okay, oh, that's go on. so radical. So, <laughs> but don't, so don't mess I do with that it. too, though. No, I take a bagel. Because they're too fat. And the thing is, they I don't go into the toasters very well. Let's so, talk about so, so you cut it into three. That's what you do. You set the middle bit aside, but you're going to yeah. use it. You're going to so use it. You don't it. throw it away. Yeah. Okay, and then what do you do? Because often you have two bagels. So now you cut them into six. Right, got you. So you've got a top and a bottom, top and a bottom, two middles. Two middles. So you can get three sandwiches out of that. See? Whoa. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's, it's mathematical, <laughs> actually. Did you yeah. ever do any maths at school? <laughs> I did a bit. <laughs> did a bit. Yeah. So then the bottom layer, I put Marmite on. Right. on, on the, Love Marmite. And then I would put a little bit of lettuce. Love lettuce. Because I'm going to put hummus on, but it's going to go through the hole if I don't put oh lettuce God, on. God, yeah. So it's like a barrier. It's, it's a yeah. whole guard. That it's, is, that's, that is yeah. next level yeah. thinking. I do I that know. sometimes with a lettuce like a barrier. barrier. Lettuce barrier. Meat, and, right. is that, and is that, did you know that instinctively or had you had hummus incidents? Yeah, like I, had a, I had a yeah. catastrophe yeah, yeah. with the hummus falling yeah, yeah. through. Yeah, sure. I thought, how am I going to solve this barrier? Lettuce barrier. <laughs> right. So you stick that on, then yeah. you get your hummus on. Yeah. You might get a little slice of cheese nice. on there. You might just have um, one slice of tomato on there. Then you might have a little pickle or two uh, sliced on there. 
and then uh, you go back to your lettuce barrier because mm. you there's another hole on the top. Remember? So you got you got to protect from that as you've well. You got to protect. From yeah, sure. <laughs> Safety first. And then but you before you do that, that top uh, layer of the bagel. I'm not boring you, am I? No, not at all. Yeah, because that the sounds dry. I'm seeing a dry bagel. No, and you don't have hummus, one surface that untouched. That top bit of the bagel. Yeah, we would do mayo. We're like the mayo one, all over it. Then I put <laughs> honey <laughs> mustard. Oh yeah. Now, do you see how transatlantic so this is? Yeah. Do you understand yeah. what's and happening here? No, I see because the impact that this woman yeah. had on this man, we just saw, as an example, in pickles, yeah. Yeah. honey mustard, yeah. radical. Yeah. Yeah. Bagels um, Bagels. But, yeah, we are the whole premise of the whole thing. A McCartney that. sandwich, we are not afraid of the condiment right. at all. Yeah. For me, the cookbook is what I sort of my memories of it when because we mm. all said there's a lot of nice stories and kind of memories in the cookbook yeah and um, for me it was very much the American side because also growing up you know there was salad cream in England yeah and mayonnaise didn't exist you know so for in our house we always had mayonnaise we always had like you know there were American products in the house mm. and I think that um, that's kind of really, I don't know what I was going to say then. Yeah. Well, something that's was no, really good, what so, I was yeah. going to say. It was so good, actually, that it blew my it brain is, internally. It. And, and then like, I forgot it because it was just so good. But it's, well, also, in, I know what Peanut you're saying. Peanut butter and jelly, like all that kind of yeah. stuff. And now it's all so mainstream. That's what I was going to say, salad dressing. Yeah. So yeah. mum was, I think if mum had could only eat one thing, it would be sweet corn. Mm. Uh, like, but American sweet corn, because again, on here it's like maize. It's mm. like they just grow that thing until it's about to turn into like, you know, a big yellow head. But mm -hmm. um, on the American side, it's like white and gorgeous and kind right. of early. Um, so I think she would have lived off that and salad. So her salad dressings were like, and still to this day, I do, um, you know, mm. everyone mm. comes with my salad and they're mm. like, what is that dressing? Mm. And, that and the is big in chef the book, salad, like everything like, in a bowl, like we'd have a big wooden salad bowl that you just always you know put no everything plates. in it no it was not a covid it's sense like a meal. Time, so it was like <laughs> but this is funny i was just looking at this and i was trying to think of what my favorite recipe would picture. be in the book and this is one of mum's quotes because i was like that she had so many at the time so many radical things that she was mm. saying and i just thought it'd be nice so she said we admire beautiful birds and their wings and feathers and yet i was at a dinner party the other night when they were all passing around bits of chicken and i heard somebody say i'll have a wing i'll have a leg yeah. Isn't that yeah. crazy? But well, I love you, how she yeah, and no, you, you know, yeah. how she, she connected it, it to the play. Kind of and that's the thing, you know, I, that's what why we went veggie in the first place. Because uh, Linda was like a great cook. She could cook a turkey great. Mm. She was a traditional great cook. But um, that was what happened. You know, we suddenly mm. um, connected what we were eating with an animal. Yeah. So, you know, we were, we were eating leg of lamb and there were lambs on, in the field on the farm that we were staying. Um, and so it's like, oh. And you know, till then you'd never even thought what a lamb was, because it's, it's just lamb. Yeah. Or it's, you know, um, liver or tongue even. Yeah. But you know, I think that it's, uh, it's interesting that um, once you start to think lamb is a lamb, and identify with it. And that was one of Linda's big things, is mm. that she was really keen on animals, um, much more than I was. And she'd grown up just loving animals. And there'd be like a creepy little frog or something. And she'd say, well, it's mommy loves it. <laughs> and it really, put it, in, it really <laughs> put it in perspective. You were, oh yeah, it's, it's mom loves it. Um, she, she would, would pick up a frog, yeah. and all the women would go, "Ah, oh, you're touching a frog!" And this frog would pee on her hand, <laughs> and she go, "Oh, it's so cute, isn't it?" You know, <laughs> she saw everything like Disney. All animals were like Disney animals. Yeah, yeah. and she but said that she she was like, "Animals can't speak, so I will speak for you know. I'm going to give them a voice." Like she'd mm. always be like, "Please yeah. don't eat animals," because they can't say, "Please don't eat me." Yeah. So I'm going to do it. So she almost couldn't help herself. Even you, you know, the nearest uh, we ever came to, and I'm I've still got it in the back of my mind to do it, is that what we got to do is we got to get a minor bird, and we've got it because they can talk like Paris, we've got to teach to say, I want my rights. <laughs> and then we've got to get you know, like sort of legal people in a room. Yeah. And the bird just goes, I want my rights. He said, well, look, he said it. Yeah. Now, now you've got to do something about it. 
So that's a future did plan. Just, <laughs> but did that seems like a lot of work, but I think it's worth it. Maybe that's why I haven't done it. Did you, they know, just you now see what we grew up with. No, no. That makes sense. I actually like it as a strategy. But didn't they just pass a law yeah. that animals are citizens? No, sentient, not. sentient, sentient, sentient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that there was is an sentient. android. <laughs> there is a robot that is a citizen, <laughs> though. Yeah, There's yeah. a robot that's a citizen oh, of yeah. Saudi Arabia, but that's not true, an but animal. Not an animal. Well, you know that's what? So um, years ago, <laughs> a friend of mine had written a book, uh, and it was to do with Tibet, and uh, he had a on the back copy, uh, back cover, he had a, a quote from um, the Dalai Lama, and he'd said the Buddhist philosophy that uh, s uh, sentient beings, we should not harm any sentient beings. I thought, wow, that's great. That's mm. And then I found out he wasn't vegetarian. So I wrote to him, dear Dalai, um, I, I was reading <laughs> the thing, I saw the quote, but I understand you're not vegetarian. Yeah. Uh, is this true or, or what's your take on this? And he wrote back, very nicely, he said, um, Did you my keep that doctors, letter? Huh? Did you keep that letter? I, I wonder, yeah. I, hopefully I have. I it, I, it may be somewhere, but he did, he wrote back and he said, um, I, you know, I do agree that sentient beings uh, should be taken care of, but my doctors have told me I've got to eat a bit of this and that. Mm. And I, I wonder if he's, changed. Yeah. Because you know, that was a little while ago. You should write him another letter. Yeah. It's, I bet it's he has. Time for I like letter. to think he has. Follow it up. Yeah. Follow up. Send, follow up. Up. Send up it with a minor bird. After oh, if he's still at the same address. <laughs> you could send the minor. You could train the minor bird to ask him. Don't send a letter. Send a minor bird. Um, what would you get it to say? A to homing him? pigeon with a letter. And a minor this bird. is a serious book, though. <laughs> no, I know. I know. It's we're having a lot of fun. You know, I think it's the great really thing, serious. though, talking, looking at it, and actually, I've just been sitting looking at it. It really is a great book, and I think the main, main, main thing is there's no sacrifice. Of, on taste and flavour and like bringing people together like in our home f as dad said food and you know that was the centre of everything being in the kitchen it was where everything mm. kind of came together it's where you know it so is many for a lot of people yeah. Store, yeah and mm. I think this book I, you know what I hope if people get this book is you know we've obviously been involved in it and I just hope that it does do that that it brings people together and that yeah. you know it actually it gives a sense of family and a sense of kind of mm. loved ones and friendships because that's really what food was for us so for so sure. do you see the book as like for non-vegetarian people mm. that want to try and figure out what it's about or for vegetarian people that want to show their oh. non-veg guests that you can have great food or is it both i mean what both for me usually, it's, I think both. usually yeah. it's about getting mm -hmm. people that are traditionally it's been about enticing people in but mm. actually now I think a I like lot that. of people mm. that aren't vegetarian have vegetarian cookbooks in their homes. Yeah. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think for us it's just, it's really just good food. I don't think everyone eats meat every single meal anymore. So you know, That's these true. are just other options yeah. for their meals. In, in yeah, and it is, it is really great. It's original purpose and the food products that we do with Linda McCartney Foods. Um, the original purpose was that you would get like a young niece or somebody coming to visit you and they'd eat with us and say, wow, if I could cook like this, as the girl said. Um, and so Linda would say, well, here, take this. And she'd go in the freezer and give them some sausage rolls or a barbecue uh, burger or something, you know, and her book. And so that was what it was. It was to get the message out. Yeah, in an inclusive uh, way, right? Uh, yeah, in in a, like a, a practical well, thing, yeah. you know. Here, check that out. Yeah. Because it's about community and cooking together and not about scaremongering because mm. now back when you guys became vegetarian there wasn't the internet and it wasn't all this information so it was a lot more watching a documentary or like the like saying it's better for your carbon footprint or do you know what's happening in the industry whereas now i don't think that's necessarily our job so much mm. maybe stella because of the fashion work you know that you, you is for you but food wise i think now there's so many good documentaries and so much good information that our thing is to let them go and now if you're interested let's sort of give ideas for cooking and like not make it all just freaky it's nice to have sometimes a book as well isn't it do you have do you guys have favorite recipes from that that, that, that your go to is yeah i like a lasagna nice comfort comfort food mm. oh and the borscht 
Me and Dad had the borscht together recently because you told me the story about when you first had borscht. When I first met Linda, I was in... uh, We were going to visit uh, folks uh, in New York and uh, we we visited her granddad, uh, Louis, uh, her grandfather Louis, who uh, had come over from the Ukraine Ukraine, and um, he took us around to his house and he cooked borscht. And it was really nice. I'd never had it before. Yeah. It's this like a beautiful soup. color. This, yeah, you know what borscht is. Well, it's I, a I'll be honest with you. I'd never, I, 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 I wasn't aware of it until I saw oh. it in the book. Really? Yeah. Well, I was. It's very yeah. Russian. Yeah, it's, it's, really it's, a, like, it's what you eat in Russia. It's traditional, right. sort of Russian, Ukrainian. Okay. It's a yeah. nice color. Yeah. It is. Yeah. But uh, so all these things, you know, happen like that. Just um, as I say, pickles. The girls are talking about pickles. I'd never had pickles, and if I ever did have them, I didn't like them. Mm. I mean, as the Beatles, we went to work in Hamburg, and uh, you could tell we'd been to the to the cafe because, like, the uh, plate was cleared except for these little gherkins around the edge of the plate. Mm. It was like, what's that? You know. This is nice. I too, like the, the black bean tacos. tacos. That would be my thing. Black crispy bean tacos. tofu. No, black bean. Oh, tacos black bean tacos. Me. Right. No, I think what's good about it, as a mum now and cooking with my kids, even though we can all cook and we ha- we like have access to all these recipes, they still get like, oh, mum, really a soup again? Like you know, <laughs> and I think what's good is they are filled with good health. Mm. These are healthy options for you know if, if you're trying to get stuff. You know, I think one of the big myths is, oh, if I don't eat meat, I'm not going to get protein or I'm going to die because I'm not healthy. Mm. And this is very much mum's thing always was, um, you know, I've got kids and I need them to be healthy. Because when they do go to school, if you're a veggie or if you're on a play date, even today, all my kids eat is pasta with tomato sauce or pizza. Like that's what they go, that's what mm. they get when they're not in the home. Mm. So everything here is really good, healthy, but really, um, I just think really friendly, like tasty food. So do you feel like, mm. from what you know, your parents passing on this, and Linda sort of being so passionate about the vegetarianism and stuff, did you feel that that was important for you to part to instill that in your children? Then did you did you have a sit down chat with them, or was that just was it just that's well, how they, it's going to go? They've grown up. All of our family is vegetarian. Yeah. Like all the kids to the, at this point. But I don't know about you. When I left home, because we were cooked for like the food, and we'd always talk about food, so it wasn't a negative thing in our home. It was more when we left home, and like Stella said, you'd go for dinner with a bunch of friends, and they'd be like, "Oh, why aren't you eating what we're eating? Oh, you're vegetarian. Do you wear leather? What do you wear? Like, oh mm. God, well, I'm not attacking you. Why do you?" Now it's not so much like that, but I, then I was like, do I want to stay vegetarian because I'm buying my own food, I'm cooking my own food, so I had to make another decision as an adult. And then, so then when we had kids, we were already, and I was like, I ate some meat, and then I was like, but I like the taste of it, but I can't justify it because I know how to cook differently, so I was just like, made the decision. So I we did cook have for that. our kids, and the kids seem to be very happy um, eating it, so until they rebel, Everyone's veggie. I had the conversation with right. my kids at yeah. the different stages. It wasn't like, let's sit down. It wasn't like having to talk on sort of sexual intercourse or drugs. You know, it was like, okay. And the kids were, it would just come up. And mm. I'd be like, well, this is why I don't eat meat. And it's you, totally your choice. But obviously, if you do, you will be banished from the house. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. it was very much Forever. like, this is why I don't do it. To be honest, kids, if you say to them, this is what's in a burger. Any kid wouldn't want to eat it. You know, kids love. I, they, they, I don't know what what age that gets kind of taken out of you. Mm-hmm. But um, they, I was like, it's my choice. This is why I don't do it, and it's totally your choice if you want it. You know, so they. Get, I think they know. But I think There's our kids want to be veggie because they. I'm number one. They eat well, mm. and number two, I think that they really know understand why they are. And there are so many great but they options totally have now. The choice to not like yeah. if kids, if you want to get them nuggets, there are so many yeah. good nuggets, and I feel like you can sort of still eat quite traditionally if you want to. You're not an outsider, I don't think. How, do you, so how much. is it for you with your kids and stuff? I, we haven't brought up our children. My wife is not. Uh, mm. She's not vegetarian. She's, she doesn't eat a lot of meat. Mm. And so our children just, we just decided to. You know, they they know they've known that I'm vegan and why mm. I'm vegan, and so we just sort of decided to let them do yeah. what they want to do and our eldest is just and like you're not going to be cooking for them by the sound no, of it exactly. and enticing yeah. them in. No. so we so better give you one of these for your wife then yes, this is going to help you out at home this is going to help your relationship yeah, like, it will for do. a long time but my, my eldest has just gone vegetarian he's just turned vegetarian he, he yeah. just sort of 
read about it and talked to, talk to me about it. So he's, so cool. he's come over to the, to the right side. <laughs> um, but the rest of them, you know, they're dead to me. Um, well, they'll make that probably, it's sort of good to make your own. That's my point about yeah. doing it when I left home. Yeah. yeah. It I wasn't like true. what I was doing as a child in the home. Yeah. It was like, I'm making a decision for myself. You and own I think it too when you do it like that. Yeah, and I, I, I think yeah. we didn't, we, it yeah. was kind of like we all sort of had to be, but then we did, you know, we felt like we didn't have to, but we did, you know, and so happy. Yeah. Because we also happened to believe in it. But we I never felt, feel like I can give myself credit for my sort of credentials as right. a sort of green. And, but you know, I feel like I was brought up on an organic farm and I was brought up with this kind of philosophy. Yeah. So you you know, if your kid owns it, he made his own choice, that's kind of powerful. Yeah, but isn't there a story, didn't you guys once, didn't these, you wanted to, you were on holiday, I'm sure there's a story about you yeah. being on holiday and you wanted to eat chicken, right? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, there was yeah, a barbecue system. Yeah. Right? It was at a hotel and um, it was barbecue night, chicken barbecue night. So we kind of, you know, we were down on the beach and the kids were running around. They came up. I remember. Mom, that. Dad, 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 it's chicken barbecue night. <laughs> we're going. Yeah, that's right. We, we know. They said, Can we try it? Can we try it? And we just like looked at each other. like, Yeah, sure, try it. Was that a but difficult? Was that a difficult thing to say? It, it was a bit. It was a bit difficult. But we quite qualified. We said, You can try it. But that those chickens. Those are the same that we have, like, at home. Mm. Those lovely little things that lay, <laughs> lay the yeah, eggs. <laughs> yes, you can try, try it. <laughs> try it by all means. Straight yeah. up. <laughs> so then, luckily so they went and they tried it. <laughs> Isn't it your birthday on Wednesday? But yeah, go it's for like, it. Try the chicken. It's like just a little bit. <laughs> Petting oh. a chicken. Just eat it. Just eat it, but you're story. not my favourite child. I have a weird <laughs> chicken story ones. from school. Anyway, they came back and they said they didn't like it. Right. So, so you didn't try it. Like you didn't try it. We have that joke at home. Like if we order something for takeaway and it comes, ultimately it's always the wrong order. It's got loads of pepperoni and loads of meat on it. I'm like, <laughs> we always joke the kids like. <laughs> 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 but but no, I mean, really, the amazing joking. thing is like Domino's do a vegan pepperoni pizza yeah. and stuff. So if you, you know, there are, you know, it doesn't taste the same. And no, I like know like you said originally, Stel, big business mm. is catching on. Yeah. And so, you know, you, you don't go a day without seeing some big plant based. We are doing our bit for the future of the. I think it's great, you know, it's, uh, there's a demand. And is bu business is going to move when there's a demand, you know. But for us, it's always just been, luckily, just this kind of fun thing that uh, all those years ago with the lambs on the farm and making the connection. From then, it was just something we just wanted to do, and we just had to work out how to do it. Right. Uh, you know and what? it became easier and easier, you know, and it became something that um, you just enjoy doing and enjoy being. You feel good. I mean, I, we live on a sheep farm. I live on a sheep farm. The kids were brought up on sheep farm. And uh, I'll go past these sheep and I'll, I'll, like, feel really good about them. You know, like, hey, guys. Don't worry about me. I'm not coming to get you. It's uh, quite nice visually as well, because you guys thinking about it, you guys sat us down. I think the first time it felt like, do you remember it this way? It was like, we're not going to eat meat anymore. But then we were still eating a bit of chicken. And then, then we were away and you sat us down again and we're like, we're not going to eat chicken. And we're quite young because you visually you were like, we've just been out and we were just behind a trailer that had like crates and crates and crates of chickens like piled up on each other so visually I found that quite yeah, you easy start to, to notice not stuff want like to that, necessarily yeah. eat it. One of the things I found with like with our kids and particularly with our with our eldest who's just gone vegetarian well done mate yeah. um, is that is actually sort of the origins of what's on your plate because you know when you talk about what things look like and often the reason that people don't think about meat uh, as a thing to eat is because it looks so you, you disconnect it from mm. the source yeah, right exactly. whereas if you're cooking with your family mm. You know, you're getting the ingredients. You're you're, you're looking. You know everything yeah, that's yeah. going into that yeah. thing. So, are there are there recipes in here that you sort of that you kind of lend themselves to you getting the kids together, or getting the family together, and doing all that together? I mean, their kids can cook really well. Right. You know, um, depending on the kid, <laughs> I would say. Well, depending on uh, that's why I was being <laughs> general. Where have you seen I, was being, our I know. Cooking. I know. No, they actually two of their cook. kids who can cook can really yeah. well. Yeah, and they're so, mine, uh, mine too. Uh, they're mine. No, 
purse? No, no, like, no, no. That's no. why I'm not being specific. No, they, here. No, they will grow up. They grow up watching people go. And it's the thing is that's why I do feel grateful because I, a lot of my friends didn't grow up like that, and because sort of prepared meals became so fashionable, and because we don't have much time to cook. A lot of people because, can't cook. Mm. No, but, I was but always, because, I'm always surprised by that. Yeah, because well, it's because prepared one meals came thing, in and they were like the big thing. But, but one other thing about this that Mum really, really, really mm. was massively passionate about was making it easy to cook. Mm. Mm. So they are like, I don't. Who likes a three-page recipe? Like literally, if you have a three-page recipe, there's no way. I don't yeah. have time for a three-page recipe. I don't have the ingredients for a three-page recipe, and I mm. do not have the ability to do a. Th you know. And mums are all like, these are all one page, right? Like literally, she did it because she wanted people to be able to cook them quickly, easily, and to take on cooking into their life. Mm. And so these are all one pages. There's and she always said how much she loved one page like, a rule. the ingredients as well, if they're not, if it's not meat. She didn't like handling meat. Right. So it's sort of nice to have the ingredients sort of a much fresher and, you know, the smell of meat she didn't mm -hmm. like, anything like that. So. So, um, is this right that um, Linda sold burgers to, to truckers on the M6? Is this true? Well, you know, because at the time, uh, the vegetarian thing was thought of as being really wimpy, and there were expressions like, real men don't eat quiche. Oh, you know, we don't do that. So, she decided <laughs> what she would do is she'd go up the M1, find a truck stop, and just arrange to go in there and cook some burgers for the truck truckers. They came in, and uh, they loved them. It was yeah. the, the first Linda McCartney burgers, and so she did that for them, and you know it became a publicity thing that real men, i.e., truckers, do eat veggie. But yeah, yeah, because I went with her to that. You and did? It, I went with her, oh, okay. and so it was great. You know what the thing? Because obviously you didn't, you didn't meet Mum. The thing is, she was so disarming. Like they probably the truckers were probably like Linda McCartney thinks she's gonna. But she, when you actually met her in real life, she was so friendly and took everybody at face value. And so she really connected with them. They were all like hanging out, laughing. She was handing out the burgers, and I think she kind of won them over. I think at the beginning it was a mm. bit like, why is Linda McCartney telling me what to eat? And then it was like actually she's. She's fun, and this is a good burger. So it was a really True. lovely thing to see that her is, uh, in that interaction. Yeah. That is an incredibly, I would say, brave thing yeah. to go and do, right? Yeah. yeah. That, that she she was it. brave. Uh, there's no doubt about it. She was very brave. But as the kids were saying, that uh, you know, if you're at a dinner party with somebody, and she wanted to make the point about, you know, eating veggie or not eating that that chicken you're about to. Eat, she could do it without causing offence. It was amazing, actually. Um, I couldn't. Mm. You know, I would say it, and people, yeah, well, you know, and it would get like, well, <laughs> and it would, you know, you get a little argument going. She, nobody ever argued with her. She just had a very good way of putting it over, where you kind of went. Think about it. Well, she was like the lawyer, like for the animals, because she was like, I'm going to speak for the animals. So she'd mm. try all these different angles. But yeah, the truck stop one was funny, because mm. yeah. it was like proper truckers like coming in, and it's like, oh, Linda McCartney's here with offering us burgers. <laughs> but she made a lot of my friends veggie. Yeah. Yeah. For a yeah. period of time. A lot of them were like, I went veggie for them. It's like, are you still veggie? Yeah. No. But she <laughs> did um, manage, she did have a, a way about her. Yeah. But I yeah. think it was just a compassion. It was more, it came from a sort of compassionate side. Yeah, mm. it was. She, you knew she had no agenda. She wasn't doing it to make money. She wasn't doing it to sort of be controlling. She did it because she really, really cared. Mm. And like, that's why the three of us are working on it still all the time, because we, we yeah. are carrying that on. But Stel, yeah. you made a good point earlier, saying the last thing people are going to bother with is cruelty to animals. Yeah. It's going to get all the other stuff, health and mm. e ecological, and then it's going to, oh yeah, and there's the cruelty thing. But um, it is funny, you know, if you look at a lot of religions, um, so I was brought up in the Christian tradition, and um, for me, this whole idea of Jesus having compassion, mm. compassion was always like, mm. wow, it's a, it's a big, big thing they're selling. And I was, th there was little, you used to get a little uh, Bible. <laughs> yeah, it's mm. Bible. Uh, I was thinking, <laughs> what was it like, a, 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 you know. In like a hotel? A, no, 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 that's not, that's Gideon. <laughs> no, um, 
illustrated yeah. with um, saints and things. And my big favourite was Saint Francis. Mm. And there was a picture of him just in a sort of chair and all these little birds mm. all over yeah. him and rabbits and everything. And I just love, love that picture. And mum's favourite Disney was always Snow White, which is the same thing. Yeah. So, you know, it was that thing of you, you're encouraged to think that way, but it, people don't follow through on that. Yeah. You know, there's certain, well, if you think that way about these bunnies and these little things, maybe you don't want to eat them. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think people are going to come to that eventually well, well I think I did think I do think you made a good point because one of the things I felt and I don't know if you guys felt this is that when they started finding other reasons to be vegetarian and vegan, I mm. felt so grateful that, that because mm. because you sort of go the animal argument is something mm. you can yeah, argue not. with you can argue about all day you know mm. because I can say well I don't think it's right and you go well animal that's what animals yeah. are for you know that you get mm -hmm. those you get those yeah. kind of counter arguments. Well, the best is if you don't do that you wouldn't have any cows. Yeah exactly yeah. Oh, really? so, We've got dogs though. Yeah <laughs> exactly but then when suddenly you go you start seeing the stuff about the environment you start yeah. seeing the stuff about the ethics of how it's produced you started looking at the fact that the thing the big thing was when people started going you can actually be yeah. ripped you can be an athlete or yeah, like, all these athletes. Being, Game changers. And then you start thinking thank God, yeah. there are other reasons, you know, because you did yeah. go, this is all supporting is things. Is that why yeah, we're all exactly. so athletic no, I really now? I agree, really so agree with that. Yeah. That's it why we're all helped. so athletic now, we know the Well, I just saw in the book, it just sort of says animal, mm. uh, elephants, horses, gorillas are all vegetarian. Yeah. And they're amongst our strongest animals, you know. So mm. those kind of things are uh, good arguments. Mm. But, um, mm. yeah, no, I think it, it is amazing the way the world is changing out of necessity because it's not going to work the other way yeah with the forests being cut down and with all these billions of animals and the water um, being yeah you know the whole thing isn't going to work the other way so it's great to, to realize that this plant-based thing uh, is the future well listen it's been a, it's been a, it's been an amazing chat i just want to say i, I can't I, I can't let this finish without saying that um first of all in terms of the the, the actual frozen foods, the actual Linda McCartney foods, you, I, I basically am here because of them. Like, I, I and, and I think that, like, yeah. genuinely, I, I've eaten so many of them, but I think the other thing that I think is true of that and also of this cookbook is that thing of pushing vegetarianism and veganism into the mainstream and to have people like yourselves be so passionate about pushing that forward and doing it in an unapologetic way, you know, it, to, to have a tool like a, a, a cookbook where I can invite people around and I don't have to go, I'm going to cook for you, but just to warn you it's vegetarian or it's vegan, but just to serve a great meal. Mm. And that doesn't even have to be brought up in the conversation. For that, I thank mm. you. And that is why I would, you know, I would wholeheartedly recommend a, a book like this. So thank you very much for your time and also for everything you've done. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Thanks, for well, thanks for doing this. It was great to uh, hang with you and have a great conversation and uh, I love your mum by the sound of things. Yeah. Could yeah. we have one more Im impersonation of your mum? What um, would she say? She would say something like, um, I'm just going to do this here down the camera. I wholeheartedly endorse this cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's, <laughs> you'll have to pay her royalties. <laughs> All right, man. I love it.